Hello and welcome back to ICOV TV, the weekly live news show. I'm James Darcy. And I'm Casey Bourne. Holly and Phil, Matt and Alex, Piers and Susanna, eat your heart out. On today's show, we're joined by the Festival of Life and Death organiser, Alan Chapman, as well as live musician, Shay Asini. We also have a live radio show being recorded right now, which will be available on the ICOV SoundCloud later. For those on the move, it's like music to your ears. I just like my karaoke skills on a Sunday night down the pub then. James, I'm really sorry, but I've heard your singing and it's not good. Nah. I have to disagree, but never mind. On today's show, we will be covering all of the news across the West Midlands with everything from ice hockey to writing competitions and a very special live performance from Shay himself. Uh, you can also catch this week's weather at the end of the show, but for now, here are the latest headlines with Christiana. Hello, my name is Christiana and here's today's news bulletin. Police are investigating the causes of a bus fire after the number 16 burst into flames Coventry yesterday. The double-decker National Express bus caught fire yesterday afternoon at 4.30 on Kelsey Road. Two fire crew services were called at the scene and no one was injured, but members of the city council are said to be concerned as, in the second seri as this is the second serious incident in just a few months involving the number 16 bus services. Homelessness has increased by almost a quarter in the West Midlands in the last year. According to the new research by the charity shelter, almost 21,000 people in West Midlands are homeless. That's a 22% increase on the number sleeping rough or in temporary accommodation. Now in national news, Priti Patel has resigned from her cabinet position as the International Development Secretary. In an open letter to Prime Minister Theresa May, Patel said that she felt she would be a better suited as a backbencher after pressure from the public to resign for holding unauthorized meetings with Israel officials. And finally, Britain's Got Talent judge Alicia Dixon will switch on the Coventry Christmas lights on the 22nd of November in the city centre. We'll be there. What about you guys? We definitely will be there. We love Christmas here at ICOV. Oh, Thank I you, Christiana. Alicia. Now, the Festival of Life and Death may not be something that you've heard of, but it's in a very important event as it's the world's biggest suicide and wellness conference and is set to be held in Leicester next year. Uh, last night, Steph Lowe headed over to the LCB depot in Leicester for the first launch event. We're here at the launch event ahead of the Festival of Life and Death taking place in September 2018. There are so many people doing amazing things, so we wanted to speak to those involved. I've been involved in lots of different things that explore the same themes because I do, I work a lot in this area. I'm the Arts Coordinator for Leicestershire Partnership NHS Trust and the Chair of Bright Sparks Arts and Mental Health Charity, which is a voluntary organisation. And also uh, a lot of my own writing explores health and wellbeing, so as a poet and an artist. So not, but not quite like this, because uh, I think this is so inclusive and it's, uh, it, it's really giving the very serious taboo issues uh, a really easy platform. Not easy, but um, a platform that makes it possible to talk about those issues. I always think as a writer, uh, to work, I, have, I have to write it out to know what's going on in my head. Almost like I don't know uh, until, I, until I explore it. And so writing, or whatever your art form can be, can be a very good way of, of, of trying to explore an issue for yourself. But then, of course, when it has its public aspect and you share it with other people, then, uh, then, then it has a potential to, um, to take other people on that journey with you. I have never, ever been involved in an event that's kind of looking at the, you know, the phenomena of life and death in this way and particularly suicide but I have been involved in lots of community events and um, things around mental health and things around well-being. I think it's just important to everyone because life and death is part of the same thing it, it occurs and suicide as well as this uh, you know is centered around it's just something that is has been so unspoken um, it's something you know it's wonderful that it can be framed in this way and, and talked about. To people considering getting involved, I say get involved. So it's not anything to be afraid of. It's a beautiful kind of, um, it, you know, as, as I expect you've all experienced being here, it's like, it's really warm and it's really um, inclusive and accepting of people, I think, and, and people on every sort of level of involvement as well. So it's not saying you must talk about this or, you know, yeah, it's lovely and there's like music and art as well. So all those things that make the make make it it all bearable. This has been Stafflow reporting for iCarve. Uh, we are now joined by the event organizer Alan Chapman to tell us a little bit more. So first of all, thanks for coming in today. Um, can you just briefly outline how you got involved with the Festival of Life and Death? 
I lost my partner Leanne to suicide in April 2015 and uh, I knew that she was unwell um, but when she actually hanged herself I'm oh, sorry to hear about that uh, thank you um, that's when um, you really understand a bit more about mm. mental health um, I began my own journey then um, I'm still on that journey um, I had some other traumas visit me uh, within a few months that most people have spread over yeah. a lifetime and um, as I say I've learned a lot about mental health and uh, suicide um, is on the rise especially among young people mm. yeah. uh, it's the about the tenth biggest killer uh, in the world now yeah. it's, it, it's shocking as a million people kill themselves in the year Every, every year, a million people kill themselves. That's so, one. can I quickly ask, um, what charities will you be supporting with the concert that you'll be holding? Well, many, hopefully, but the, the starting charities will be Samaritans, yeah. uh, survivors of bereavement from suicide. Mm -hmm. uh, Leanne's uh, charity, she lost her daughter to bone cancer in 2009 oh, and supported um, Bone Cancer Research Trust. Mind is another important charity for us, and there will be many yeah. others trying to do good work to raise uh, awareness just, about Just suicide. finally, can I ask him, how, how do you feel about having the biggest suicide and wellness conference here in Leicester? Uh, it's fabulous for Leicester, but mm. it's not enough. We need to go interplanetary on make this to make a change. Okay. Yeah, so sign up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in today, Alan. Um, if any of you have been affected by this topic or you need someone to contact, please visit our social media where there will be contact details for all of the charities. Uh, so now for a bit of a sporting treat, how was your hockey skills, Casey? Well, to be honest, I'd say that I'm up there with the Coventry Blaze. So you're a bit of a slow burner on the ice, I'll take it. You could say that. Uh, our reporter Kane Hocking has more on the current form of the Blaze this season. A fire reignited as resident ice hockey team the Coventry Blaze walk away from a very successful weekend, taking home a full four points with conference victories over the Guildford Flames and local rivals in the Milton Keynes Lightning. Before this weekend, the Blaze seemed to be on a cold streak, only picking up two victories in their past five games. I met up with Blaze players Garrett Ladd and Jordan Pietras to get their thoughts on their performance so far, as well as the four-point weekend. Yeah, we, uh, we just weren't playing simple hockey and uh, it resulted in us having a string of losses there. So uh, we worked hard in practice and really simplified the game and we came out with four huge points for conference games and uh, we're just going to keep it rolling from here. This weekend was a big weekend for us going in. Uh, we knew that we were, uh, we were kind of struggling in some different areas and we needed to get some points on the board. So it was, uh, it was an important weekend, beginning of an important month. Uh, playing two division rivals and uh, so it was a big weekend for us and we knew that coming in um, you know coming out of the weekend obviously getting four points is, is huge for us so uh, it's a good feeling at camp right now but it's just the beginning so we're still hungry and uh, we, we have to keep things ro uh, rolling. With the team's motivation and an all-season high the Blaze look to set the British ice hockey scene alight once more this weekend with their conference rematch against the Milton Keynes Lightning as well as an elite league showdown against the Fife Flyers on their journey to reclaim their place amongst Britain's best. This has been Kane Hawking reporting for ICOV News. Uh, we're now joined by Shay now, so first of all, thanks for coming on to the show today. And I'm just going to jump straight in there. What's the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you live on stage? Uh, great question, actually. Um, basically, I saw on stage in front of a lot of people, and uh, yeah, it was quite awkward. <laughs> but I just carried <laughs> on singing, yeah. so it was alright. <laughs> so your EP's coming up. Yes. Do you have a name for it yet? Or are uh, we still undecided? Well, so far, uh, I'm thinking about Sunder. Uh, but I'm still undecided because there's a lot of like, options I can choose from. Mm. Yeah. But I'll let you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of uh, flow are you going for in this EP? R&B, acoustic, um, mostly about that, R&B and acoustic. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So you briefly told us about your time on the X Factor. Yeah. Can you let all the viewers for iCorp <laughs> know how it went? <laughs> um, it went quite well, actually. I really enjoyed it. Um, I. I went to the judges, no, not the judges, excuse me, sorry, <laughs> the producer stage, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't get through to the judges stage, so that was the, uh, the cut fall for me, but uh, yeah. who knows next year, we'll see. Yeah, any other competitions, maybe The um, Voice? Nah, no. Nah, I just want to try and get the music, uh, yeah. 
especially if that's cool. So um, you do a lot of open mic nights. Uh, yeah, I do. Would you I ever do. consider doing a gig? Definitely, definitely, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, so uh, what, what song are you going to play for us today then? Uh, it's not got a name, but I'll call it Comfortable Today. Comfortable okay. Today. And then, just, just finally, you, you write your own songs. This is a bit of a... <laughs> but um, have you ever thought about writing a book before? No. No? no. Okay. Never. <laughs> what, what, about, uh, what about you, Casey? Did you find yourself as a bit of a writer? Yeah, I would. I, used to, I need to get back into writing yeah. because I used to be such a bookworm. No. Well, Casey, this story's going to be right up your street then. Um, November marks the start of National Writing Month, where budding writers commit to writing a 50,000-word novella in a month. To get involved, head on over to nanoremo.org. But for now, here's Steph Lowe with more. National Novel Writing Month is a creative writing project that takes place every November. What started out in 1999 with just 21 participants has grown to involve over 200,000 people. Often referred to as NaNoWriMo, the project challenges people to write 50,000 words between the 1st and the 30th of November and offers face-to-face -face as well as online support throughout the month. We spoke to Izzy Trevelyan and Shannon Stanett from the West Midlands area to find out how NaNoWriMo supports them. I think it's kind of like having a baby, you know, that's... You do it and it's really hard, but you, you kind of forget about all the hard bits and think, oh yeah, write a novel, I can do that. And then you come back to it and then about two days in you remember, oh no wait, this was actually quite difficult. But then you've already done it once and you've sort of committed to it. And the first week is quite nice because you've got all these ideas and these thoughts and you're writing, you know, as, you know, keeping up to your word count or just writing lots. And then by about two or three weeks in, you start to think, I'm just writing utter rubbish now. I think that happens to most writers, that stage of just thinking, what, what the hell am I doing? And then you kind of come out the other side and you either have a full novel or you've got a lot of writing that you're happy with and there are bits that you actively think, yeah, this is, this is quite good. And that's quite rewarding. The, the NaNoWriMo literature sort of tells you that everyone's got a novel in them and this is your time to do it. And yes and no to some extent. Some people have a, have a great work they want to do. Some people just feel like they should be writing more. But I think storytelling is this amazing thing that humans can do and everyone can do it. Everyone can say something. I was speaking to somebody earlier about why I got involved in the first time and I have no idea. It just sounded like a good idea. Um, I've always wanted to do writing um, and it's kind of a stable part of my year. So on Twitter they run word sprints pretty much 24-7 for the entire month. Um, where So they have different people from around the world that log into their Twitter um, and take it over for a, a couple of hours. Um, and give you different prompts, and some will do five minutes sprints, and some will do 20 minutes sprints, and some will do um, ooh, 1k30, where you try to write a thousand words in half an hour. It's fun to challenge yourself. That might just be me, um, who likes to set impossible challenges. It's interesting to see when you've started with a blank page and you have no idea where you're going. It's interesting to see what happens. It's not too late to write as much as you can this November. For more information, head to icov.co.uk. This has been Steph Lowe reporting for ICOV. Finally time to hear all about the miserable West Midlands weather. So we're going to pass you over to our weather reporter, Lizzie Johnston. Good afternoon, I'm Lizzie Johnston and here's today's weather. It's bright and sunny after a cloudy morning with temperatures reaching 12 degrees and winds up to 10 miles per hour. However, cloud will spill in from the west overnight, dropping temperatures to 5 degrees with some patchy light rain early Friday morning. Over the weekend, the clouds will clear, leaving it bright and sunny, but prepare for the cold as temperatures are set to drop to 2 degrees with winds of 15 miles per hour. So make sure you wrap up warm. And now, back to James and Casey in the studio. Thank you, Lizzie. That's all for today's show. Thank you so much for joining us. To stay updated with everything happening in the West Midlands, make sure you follow us all on social media and check out icov.co.uk. Uh, yep, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter and our new Instagram account, so don't be afraid to give us a follow because if my mum can, you can too. Now you know where to find us. We will see you back on the sofa at the same time again next week. Uh, now playing us out with his own track, Comfortable, here's the extremely talented Shea Sini.
said some things to hurt you That was just my point of view I'ma take you for a ride at the weekend There ain't a lot of talking we will do I'ma get my money up with a couple shows Girl, you know you're about to get the best view You don't have to be right now The show is just getting to the private part Girl, take your time so it can happen Ah, sure, right. The thing is, they'll tell us to wrap up and stuff. Yeah. Yeah.